I'll leave basically to you. I, you know, it's so it's so tough to um, to talk about this. Not only because it's personal, but there's so much like uh, so much of my life when I was a kid, like revolved around Ali. That to to the sum it up is very difficult. All I can say is that I felt about Ali like so many millions of people did. You know, if you ever saw him in a crowd, it wasn't just like a normal famous person. It was like. It was like everyone in the crowd was looking at him, like, come on, this is me, Ali, you right, know? Right. Like, they had this special connection with him, and I was one of those people. I felt like, I, you know, that, 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 that he was so meaningful to me that somehow that, you know, somehow the connection was there, even if he never met me. But I, I got to spend a day with him in 99 on his farm, spent the whole day there, wow. and it was amazing, you know, he, he, he was uniquely uh, suited to be the most famous person in the world because he loved people, Ali loved people. Do you think that down the line, I mean obviously his legacy is never going to die, but that people will remember him maybe not even so much as a fighter or just like somebody that really changed, I guess sports uh, for that matter. No, I think they're going to remember him as a fighter. I mean, right. everything I mean, else, every, let's put it this way, everything else, the platform he had is because he did the impossible. Right. It's not just because he was great. You know, if he loses to Foreman, he's he's much more a, a, a man of his time than the greatest of all times, you know? And But the fact that he, that he was able to do things that people didn't think were possible right. made the stuff outside the ring so much bigger because, you know, it, it oppressed people all around the world identified with him. He wasn't asking permission. He was